Welcome to Porter. This special meeting of um, Borough Council tonight. I said it's perfect. Um, Mr. Lock, Manager Lock, would you call the roll? Um, I think 
most of, I know most of you, but as a little background, I grew up in Jacobtown and attended the schools from grades one through 12. I currently own a law firm on Yorkway Place and I live in the borough with my husband and our three children, two of whom attend our school. First, thank you for serving on Borough Council. It's such an important job, especially in such a small place like Jacobtown, where every one of your decisions directly affects the lives of so many of our residents and your neighbors. It's generally a thankless job, so thank you for taking this on. Second, thank you for ordering an independent analysis from EIS Solutions of the potential tax revenue from the proposed plan to build a Taco, a Taco Bell. While there are many, many reasons to not support this plan that requires 14 variances and that is very bad for our borough, our neighbors, and our current businesses, the one that we can all agree is unacceptable is the loss of tax revenue that we would all suffer with the building of this Taco Bell. So thank you for your skepticism that the proposed Taco Bell will be worth, as the developers claimed, twice what every other Taco Bell in Montgomery County is worth. And thank you for investigating this claim to get your own numbers, showing that the tax revenue would in fact decrease from the current revenue of the building. Lastly, thank you for listening to the voices of this community. Today we have amassed 247 online signatures and 115 hard copy signatures on petitions, which represents 35% of the registered voters who voted in the last election. Borough Council is the voice of this community, and our community wants sustainable, walkable, productive development. The community, along with the planning commissioners, has set forth the vision for this development of Jenkintown in the Jenkintown 2035 plan, set to be adopted next week. The Taco Bell requiring 14 variances, surface parking on Old York Road, and a drive through is directly in opposition to this plan, and is none of the things that we want for our community. We welcome good development in Jenkintown. Development that will enhance our town, improve life for our residents, and expand our tax revenue and fund our schools. And we hope that developers will come here with plans to do just that. However, this application, as set forth, does none of those things. And because of that, I ask that you vote to withdraw your support for this plan. Thank you. Yes. Hi, uh, Felice Armento. Um, I've lived in the borough for 30 years. I've been a longtime volunteer on JCA events, uh, co-president of the Newcomers Club, vice president of the library board, very involved in the community. I've got one daughter in high school, and I count my family very lucky to be part of such an engaged community. Um, my business, the Art Partnership, has been in Jenkintown for over 10 years, and our office is currently on the first floor of, four, of 463 York Road. We employ six people, two of whom are in the borough, um, so we keep all of our re revenue basically within a 10-mile radius. Um, Taco Bell is claiming $1 million in revenues, which would bring in gross receipts, uh, business privilege receipts of under $1,000. Um, presently, there are at least five leasable spaces on the property. Just alone, our business alone generates 1.2 to 1.4 million, which converts into gross receipts, uh, business privilege receipts of over 4,000. Um, Hillary discussed the discrepancy of the tax already. Uh, for those of us working together in opposition, we're in purple tonight, um, to the proposed Taco Bell, this is not a save the building campaign. I do, do believe, though, that finding an adaptive reuse for the current building would be very much more in keeping with the 2035 plan that we're looking to adopt. Um, the seller has every right to sell, and I'm well aware that my business will have to move at some point. Uh, this is really about whether drive through open to 2 a.m. is the right development for this location in Jankatown. Thank you for your consideration. My name is Adrienne Red. Every person in this room knows me, knows the time that I put into this community, knows that I'm despite my fandom of Grateful Dead, not wild-eyed nor strident. I am a party of interest. I'd like to be registered as a party of interest. And I cede the balance of my time to the attorney that we've hired to speak on our behalf in opposition to these 14 variances. Thank you. My name is Michael Yano from the law firm of Freeman Schumann. I represent a group of neighbors who are opposed to the Taco Bell application. Uh, my concern is, is from a purely legal standpoint. As it's already been indicated, there are approximately 14 variances that have been requested. Many of them are dimensional variances, which the Zoning Hearing Board will consider in the course of its deliberations. But this borough has, has seen fit to not once, but twice, prohibit drive through facilities within the, the language of this ordinance. So there must have been a pretty clear intent that the drive through facilities are not something that this borough is looking for, especially at this particular location. This variance, the variance requested is, is a, the burden is, is on the applicant, obviously approve their, um, their right to have that variance, but they have a lot more to do than just say, we would like to have a drive-through for Taco Bell. 
They have to prove the use. They have to prove lack of other uses. They have to prove the investigations that they've made with respect to the, to the use of the building. There's a, a lot to do. And with the borough ordinance being as clear as it is, I, I think that that is a tremendously uphill battle. We intend to be present if the, if the matter goes forward. We intend to be present at the zoning hearing board and to raise the issues that, uh, that we know legally are going to be raised. My job is not to raise the emotional issues. My job is to raise the legal issues, and we will be there to do so. Thank you. Madam President, if I could just ask a question of Mr. Yano, uh, and I know this is usually not for a public comment. I just want to make sure your clients understand that this is not the zoning hearing board. This is not the, I just want to make sure that, I just want to make sure that they understand that. This is tonight about whether or not I'll withdraw the support. And they understand that completely. Okay. And uh, we know that our time will come before the zoning hearing. Okay, I just want to make sure. Thank you so much, Mr. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I, I was also a little puzzled by your statement of if the matter goes forth, because my understanding is that the application has been received. Well, it, just a question of whether or not the applicant desires to go forward on the day of question. That's okay. Thank you. All right. Is there any other public comment? Yes. <coughs> Good evening, Council. You all know us. Um, with Scott Hummel and, and Joe from Summerwood. We've been here since November trying. I'm sorry, Allison Fritches. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, we still want Council support for this project. It's scheduled for next week. We have our witnesses lined up. Um, we are more than happy to. Since November, we've been asking Council what you'd like to see from us. If there's any concerns that you have regarding drive through hours, regarding things like that, we're happy to talk about that. We're happy to talk about reducing those hours to eliminate that variance as a condition of your support. We are happy to talk about other things that are concerning to you that could be a condition of your support rather than you withdraw. If there are other concerns, um, you know, we were asked to come here because we knew residents were coming, that, that we're going to ask you to withdraw. As far as the e-consult that's been out since March, I'm not a tax expert. Um, we hired an expert, as you know, that came present all the numbers to you. I would defer to your solicitor, who I know absolutely is an expert in that area, and I would, you know, ask him. I mean, maybe he can put my mouth as to which numbers he would say if it went to court would would be upheld. The other thing about our report is we're giving counsel an opportunity to, it, let's say it comes in lower than what Mr. Bissy said, that you take our report to the court and say this is what the owner actually said it was worth. And you get what our report said. So regardless of what anybody else says, if we're dead wrong, a judge is going to say, most likely, and again, I defer to Mr. Hitchens, how can you go against your own number? So this is going to bring in revenue, just like it's been, it's going to bring revenue for the borough, it's going to bring in a traffic light in the old road to slow down traffic, and it's going to redevelop that property. I spoke to the owners, the Hellwigs, this morning. They've been trying to, you know, redevelop or sell that property for a long time, and you know, it, it's been, I think, 2013, they said they merged their funeral homes. I know it is rented now, but they've had, they've had trouble. So um, it's an opportunity for the borough to get more taxes on their books, an opportunity for the seller to, you know, get out from under a property that they can't, you know, they're not making the revenue they need to, to pay the taxes right now. It's over-assessed. Um, and if, if, you know, if they do file to have it reassessed, those taxes, we believe from our numbers, from our experts said, they're going to go down. So you're going to receive less taxes on that property than you do now if if our expert is correct in what this hearsay he said to us that that property is over assessed. So again, we are happy to talk to council between now and Thursday about conditions. We're happy to talk to you in, in public session about things you're concerned about. Um, hours on drive through I know are a big one. Uh, other than that, you know, the plan is exactly, all those variances are just to get us to the plan that, that you approved, so to speak, when we came back here in November. So that's all it is. It's just strictly a lot of the handouts that are dimensional variances. The use variant, the variance issue is not for council to decide, it's for the zoning hearing board to decide. So, and council can support any project that they want to. So, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, I'm yes. Chrissy Leach. I reside behind um, the proposed Taco Bell at 434 Leadham Street. I am also a business owner in town. I own a business on West Avenue, 714 West Avenue, and I recently expanded that business to 
539 Old York Road. I give my party status to Mr. Yanov. I know, I think if the board, if, if the Board Council would allow, I know it's really not a give and take situation, Patrick. I know. We, we, yeah, no, 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 I just make sure they understand it's not, there's no party status here. There's it's no party, party status. Public, here. Everybody, uh, everybody, my, understands. Okay, yeah. everybody understands. Okay, Everybody understands. I just want to make one point, and I'm, I know the Borough Council knows this. I represent developers. You may not know that, but I represent a lot of developers. <clears throat> and I don't think I've made a single application in any municipality over the past 40 years where I haven't raised the tax issue. The tax issue is not really what's before you and not before the Zoning Hearing Board. It's the appropriateness of the use that the Zoning Hearing Board has to make a determination on, and the appropriateness of the use that this Borough Council has to decide whether they're, before, whether they're for it or against it. So developers will raise that, that specter of, oh my god, you're going to lose tax revenue. Well, that's not what the issue really is. The issue is, is this the right use for this location and this property? Thank you. Uh, yes. Good evening. Uh, Scott Hummel, um, equitable owner of the Alvin property. Um, just want to make sure that the council is aware um, of some of the restrictions of other potential uses for that old property. Obviously, there's a plethora of uses out there. You can name a hundred. Whether or not financially they work, whether it be sustainable, raise taxes, not raise taxes, who knows? But I did want to make sure that the public is aware, and the council is aware, that there's a deep restriction, not placed on by the houses, there's a deep restriction for alcohol or against alcohol on that property. Just so you know that the pool of potential tenants out there um, forget about the restaurant, whether it's a bring your own or if they're serving alcohol. Uh, the grant, grant tour, I guess, who placed that restriction on the property is not present and cannot be reached to lift it. The borough can't lift it either. I can't lift it in the Hellwigston. So when we are looking at the property, um, and of course from an economical standpoint to make the numbers work based upon what we're paying for it, we had to eliminate right away the restaurants that serve alcohol or could serve alcohol on their premises, even if it was a bring your own. Uh, by example, uh, I happen to like Marzano's. They couldn't come here. Um, if Taco Bell um, did a different um, type of uh, menu product, they cannot serve alcohol. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody's aware. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to uh, uh, say that uh, I have always my preferences of of different uses also, but just the pool of potential users isn't quite as big as you think, um, not only because of the economics, the cost for site development, stormwater management, everything like that, um, but also the deep restriction that exists. And so thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, could I ask you a question? Yes. Have you spoken with the tenants about, um, you're the equitable owner, and I just Correct. wondered if you have engaged with the tenants regarding the use and um, purchase of the property? Uh, I have not spoken directly to the tenants. Um, I made sure that I uh, didn't want to interrupt the Hellwig's existing business or didn't want to rattle any feathers. They're obviously free to have their own opinions. I respect their opinions. I have a copy of all their leases. I didn't want to make that public knowledge, but in my due diligence, I had to understand what leases were terminable and what leases were terminable. Um, I'm okay to say that uh, nobody in there is, is, is secure the way the Hellwigs have this set up. They want to sell this property, and every tenant is terminal in there. Um, I did look at their numbers, and I don't even know how to pay their existing taxes, um, whether it's out of the pocket or not, but I know the cash flow. I do want to do, reiterate the fact that we will be on the Hellwigs' behalf uh, before August, applying for a real estate tax appeal, um, just because based upon the current assessment and the um, net operating income and how the county will probably take a look at that to analyze what the uh, assessed value should be. But we feel from our expert that it is uh, over assessed uh, by our experts. Who knows what will happen, happen in county um, by about twice of what its true value is today. Um, so there's, there's uh, no way to tell, again, what will happen with the taxes in the future. Uh, we showed a report that it will go up from Taco Bell. Um, we're also spending our money because we truly believe they will go down and it's an existence um, revenue stream in current taxes. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, why can't the owner change the deed restriction? Well, good question. And uh, I, I would leave to the solicitor so to maybe um, explain it better. They didn't place the deed restriction on it. Who did? Predecessor. 
Um, and we can't even locate who that is to lift it. We have lifted the restrictions in the past by hunting down with the, I guess it's the grand tour of it. Um, in this case, we couldn't. Trust me, we'd like to, but we'd like alcohol one day. Um, but I would let the solicitor uh, better answer the legal component of how a deed restriction is lifted. Well, I, I just find that funny. You can't find who that is and um, and why you can't change that. I just, it's the first time hearing of it. That's interesting. It's very difficult. Also, there, and I, just, I don't know the ins and outs of the church being across the street, but there's an inclination of we're not going to be able to have within so many feet of the church. That's what, we have to look into that because I'm not an expert for liquor control for this staff. We actually said that the very first in November when we were here. We said it was a be restriction for alcohol. Yeah. So that's been, we have been saying that but throughout. Irrelevant of the church, because um, I don't really know much about what you can, what you can't do, and if the church ever closed, there is a deed restriction on that property for alcohol. Um, and again, I'll leave it to the solicitor to better explain how one lifts that deed restriction. I, I don't think we need to go into the ins and outs, because we talked about deed restrictions with other matters yeah. before, so I think council's familiar with what deed restrictions are. I right one thing on behalf of colleagues, I'm sorry, I want the tenants to know that they very much like them being at that property and in no way, you know, they want to make sure the tenants understand that they're very happy with the tenants uh, right there, so I want to make sure they don't think that it's anything Against the tenants from the office. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even apply. I didn't even apply. I think I applied that. So I don't mind naivete, but I just wondered if the property was for sale. If you asked the tenants, did they want to buy it? The property was never listed for sale. It's never been listed yeah. on the open market. Ever. I talked to a realtor, Hillary from 300 Mather Road. So if the public's were so serious about selling it, why was it never listed? Don't talk to me. There's no, <laughs> there's no listing price. So, yes, no, I don't actually expect an answer because I did speak to the realtor who's representing the Hellwigs and representing the developer. It was never listed on the open market. So, yes, there may have been a sign. Yes, there is a private deal, all totally legal. But that does not show any intention to actually go out and sell it. I've spoken to multiple realtors that have other interested parties that would be interested in developing this property. This is not a desperation situation. And I think the threat from the developer to go and try to get a tax appeal assessment is really kind of insulting. If you were to calculate the income capitalization approach that they used on their appraisal using the current income capital that income from the property today, it would be one and a half times what the Summerwood com company could bring in. So I don't know which way it would go, but at the same time, if you're going to bank on anything, banking on a company that is not going to bring in any additional tax revenue is not the way to go. Thank you. I'm going to call it. Um, I just want to respond to the issue with the selling to the, I'm sorry. I think they're out of time. That's been three minutes, right? <laughs> you, were, you were also were given a second. <laughs> but I didn't lose my whole three. I'm going to give them I, just, more time. I, well, I, I spoke with the Hellwood this morning, and they did indicate that they had spoken with Ms. Leach about purchasing a property. Ms. Leach just spoke with them, and at this point, that's not an option. So that has been explored. Okay, thank you for answering my question. Uh, Councilor Gould. Sure. I, I'm certainly interested in looking further into how the deed restriction might be lifted. Um, and so there, there will be more legal uh, conversation using the actual documents. But I can tell you, I've seen the original deed to my house, and I'm not allowed to live there, and I'm still there. So. <laughs> well, that's because of the Fair Housing Act that made that deed restriction illegal. Re removing a deed restriction that's not patently illegal, saying Catholics or Jews can't live there, because I've lived in a house, I can't live in too, isn't the same as trying to remove a perfectly legal deed restriction. One of the hardest things to do, yeah. unless you can find the person who put the restriction on and get him or her to rescind it. Right. Well, they they can be dead. Yeah. Yeah. So, are, have we moved beyond okay. public comment? Well, to let me just find out. Hold on one second. Was that the, that was that your comment that you wanted to? Oh, make? that's clearly no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I asked a question. All this stuff. How do you reinforce a deed restriction like this? Like, whose whose job is it to say you can't serve? Is um, that the is this, are, I'm are, trying to answer this. Is your time of public comment? No, no, I was just going to try to answer No, let question. me just ask Allison. Um, it's the very start, but I'd like to just the question to capture my three minutes, if you don't mind. Um, Allie Lester, 315 Greenwood. Sorry. I'm going to ask our attorney to briefly okay. comment on that. Thank you. We're not really discussing deed restrictions right now. But. Yeah, it's a really difficult uh, thing to answer in a short blurb. Um, 
obviously the, the first party that would have the immediate rights to enforce a deed restriction would be the, the family or whoever owned the deed restriction to begin with. Who we don't know. Who uh, right, but theoretically, if other okay. people were aware of the deed restriction, I'm sure there could be probably an equitable basis to claim to enforce the same deed restriction. So, for example, let's say the neighboring property was aware that a deed restriction was on his neighbor's property. He may try to make an equitable basis for, for enforcing it. I mean, I think that's beyond the scope of what, gotcha. what okay. is tonight, but I'm, I'm trying to give you at least some of a flavor of what, what are the potential issues out there. In plain English, that's not the borough's in charge of getting rid of the deed restriction. That's why I think it's beyond the scope of what the borough needs to be concerned about, but I'm trying to be helpful to both council and to. All right, are there any other public comments? Oh, Alice. Um, uh, thanks. Um, Allie Lester, 315 Greenwood, again. Um, I just want to say that at the beginning of this whole process, and like you guys said, it's been a long time, um, we were all under the impression that this building was a lost cause, but since then we've all learned a great deal about it. I never even really gave it more of a second look. It, it's beautiful. It's in great shape. Those pictures uh, from the inside are stunning. Um, you know, it's a vibrant, uh, economically viable space uh, with a lot of potential. And... Um, you know, while, again, if, if these developers were coming in and, and they bought this property and they chose to knock it down and put something up that was to code, that would be a shame and it would further erode the um, character of our community, but it would be entirely their business. But uh, the fact that they're asking for these variances here uh, makes it our business. And, you know, we really do, I, I do think that, I understand this is not the, the hearing, but I do think that the Zoning Hearing Board takes your endorsement uh, you know, into high consideration. You know, it's it's very important in this. And where you stand, you know, even if you, you know, just go neutral on this, I think would really, um, you know, go a long way. And, you know, my concern with these variances is that, you know, once we do this, once we allow these, you can't deny it to the next person that asks. Um, you know, we've seen, we've all heard recently about the plight of Whitehall Township, um, where that headed. And, uh, you know, certainly you know, don't want to open Pandora's box there. So thank you all. Um, I know this is really a hard decision. I know there's, you know, two sides to this, but, you know, this is really, and I want to also say I'm not anti-Taco Bell. Um, I, I, I'm not proud, but I've had my share of 10 packs in my time. Um, but this particular location, uh, this particular proposal with this 2 a.m. drive through which, by the way, I want to remind you all that, that you had talked in a meeting. I don't know what came of it, but you did mention that you were interested in, you know, definitely nothing later than midnight at one point. Um, you know, I, I just want to say this is not right. This is, this, you, you, it just, you know, go out to that street, see those children playing, see how close this is going to be those houses. It's just, this isn't us. So, thank you all. Just one I keep hearing Alexandria Cleo 514 that other people have approached this property, other people are interested in this property. Developers are not shy people. So I am sure if a developer really wanted that property, they would have gone to the Hellings and said, we'll buy it. But no one has. No one has. That property is available. I feel really bad. Your pro what you've done to the property, you made it beautiful. I really think you should buy the property. You would make it so great. But this property needs to be sold because we have a buyer. We have a business that actually wants to come here and stay in business. We can't keep businesses in Jenkintown. I'm a very progressive, liberal, etc. But when we get a good business partner, someone who really, again, go to Glassdoor, you'll find he's got as good reviews by his employees as any other company out there. He does really good community work. And yes, he would actually invest in this community. What a shame that would be. We actually have a buyer. Not a fictitious buyer, not someone who's pretend, not someone who says, hey, I've spoken. We actually have one. I welcome you to our community. I, actually, I think I, I forgot something that helped me remember. Uh, it's really quick, I promise. Um, you know, this is a huge franchise. Uh, 30 seconds. This was a huge this is a huge franchise, something like a hundred of these, right? And this and this. Um, we're talking about you know, this guarantee that this, you know, what they promised in their tax assessment, you know, we always have the fallback of going and fighting it with a lawyer if it doesn't pan out. Well, you're going to be, you know, bucking heads with a franchise of 100 or in some Taco Bells, that lawyer. I, I just, you know, it just seems like a gamble to me. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
All right. Um, I want to check in with the two counselors who are on the phone to see if you have any questions or comments that you want to make during this period. Support, not to consider, but to actually consider, withdraw. Yeah, to consider withdrawing. Yeah. What? I'm sorry. To actually withdraw. To withdraw. To actually withdraw. Yes. Yes. To actually withdraw. Perfect. Yes. Second. Thank you. And so, questions or comments? Um, yes. So I, I know I'm uh, speaking to hear myself speak since I think I judge the room fairly well, um, but I think it's a terrible shame um, for us to change our position on this. This is will be the third time we voted on exactly this question. Um, we supported the first two times and now we changed the position. And the reasons, all the reasons that we supported it before are still absolutely the case. We have a very credible assessment that says that the tax revenue will go up north of $80,000 versus the current revenue, which is likely to go down. We've heard from the owner that they're gonna challenge the current 40,000 or so assessment. And so there's probably better than a $40,000 a year swing. In, this, in the context of the school district talking about maybe having to cut certain programs or increase class sizes and everything else because of the reduction in revenue. We have, we'll be doing the developers a terrible disservice. They came to us back in November and were encouraged by us and we voted to support this and then voted again to continue supporting this. And on the assumption that we were supporting it so they had a chance at ZHB, because this drive through variance without our support has no chance. They've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, I guess. And so for us to say, yes, we're gonna support it, so then they go spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then we say, oops, changed our mind, is disrespectful and shitty to them. And I wish we weren't considering doing it or weren't about to do it, which I think we are. We're going to turn away people who would come and spend three million or so dollars here in our borough, improving stormwater management, putting in traffic controls on Old York Road, which is a terrible problem for us. You'll, there's no more public comments, so you can sit. There's who are going to put new buildings in the place of decrepit buildings, who are going to create jobs, good jobs for teenagers who need jobs, who are going to, who've expressed perfect willingness to reduce the drive through hours to midnight. And if we said right now, will you reduce the drive through hours to midnight if we maintain our support, I bet you dollars to donuts they would say yes. And the downside is aesthetic at best. Madam um, President, will you allow a correction to that? No, no, no I can't. And right now we're, we have a motion on the floor in a and second. And by the way, the objection to drive through is not a categorical rejection. We allow drive throughs in the Gateway District, we don't allow it in town center. But these guys are a matter of a couple hundred yards away from the Gateway. And so the allowing the drive through here isn't allowing something that we would never consider. If they were a couple hundred yards farther down, they'd, they'd just have it. And the idea that, that having a drive through is gonna destroy Jenkintown, the, the level of, of the intense fervor against it is, is frankly puzzling to me. It's a restaurant. I mean, it's a, it's a Taco Bell on 611. This is not the end of the universe. But it's a way to get people to put $3 million into the infrastructure of town. And it's a way to get $40,000 more revenue, according to our lawyer. Now, there was a lawyer who's opposed to the project, who has an ax to grind, who says, well, no, it's not going to be there. But our own lawyer says, 
and I'm putting words in your mouth, but correct me if I get it wrong, that they came, Taco Bell came, with their assessor and their assessment in a public meeting with their lawyer present and stood up and said, this is the right assessment. Can, I'm not gonna question you, but there's not a better weapon that we could take in to challenge an assessment that was down to get that assessment pushed back up to or nearly to what they said it was. So the story that the, the revenues are gonna go down is not credible and We've asked people, we've given them our support, and now we're yanking it, so we're gonna cause them to waste several hundred thousand dollars, and that's not right. And we're not gonna get the improvements to the infrastructure, and that's a terrible shame. And it just, it feels stupid to be voting on it for the third time to change our position when none of the information has changed. So, that's what I have to say. Thank you very much. Could I say something? I, I, I agree with almost everything that Rick said. Um, I also take Mr. Yanoff's point that the scope of things we're talking about with respect to the Zoning Hearing Board's better decision has kind of grown uh, beyond what the scope would, will be for the Zoning Board. But I, an additional piece of this is that we've heard from the owners and, and the people backing the art partnership that they love Jake and Town. They love being here, they love doing business here. There are plenty of, of uh, locations in Jenkintown that could very easily house a business like our partnership. So, um, I mean, it would be an inconvenience, no doubt, but, uh, you know, it, it puts a bit of a, of a shadow on the idea that the tax revenue from the art partnership is going to disappear. Uh, it very well might. But Jenkintown is a nice place, and there are plenty of, uh, convenient locations for a potential move. <clears throat> so I, that's entering into my decision as well. What's entering into my decision is, is not, well one, there isn't a clear uh, notice that we're, they're going to be a reduced hours to midnight. So I, I, have, I have a bit of pause on that. But more than that, as as a, as a person who's representing residents of Ford One, I'm concerned that we've gotten such a loud and vocal public outcry against it. And that just, I, I give pause to that. Like I just, I hear that. And that makes me think that we have an obligation to be responsive to what it seems as though a significant portion of the people who've at least come out to speak on behalf of this have had to say about it. And that's what makes me think that, you know, about our, our duty in this role. And that's what gives me pause. Any other questions or discussion? Or can I ask a quick question? Oh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Okay, so this motion is to withdraw our support. Is it to oppose it? Is it to stay neutral on this? Thank you for asking that clarification. Um, I wanted to say that um, I believe the motion is simply to stay neutral. So we may have Thank to revise you. this wording, or is just the withdrawal <coughs> the same? It seems clear that it's a withdrawal of support. It was not a withdrawal of support and a motion to make an opposition. It was just Correct. a withdrawal of support. Withdrawal. Okay. So, so implicitly we're just saying neutral if we support the withdrawal of this. Correct. No one from, from the solicitor office would show up to the zoning hearing board to say anything with regard to the application. Councilor Golden. Sure. Um, also, Ward One, so I, I, I hear what our folks are saying. Part of my opposition to this, my, my certainly support of withdrawing council support of this, is that originally we were pressed in time to discuss this, to decide it very quickly, and that has turned into not a problem. So we were asked to do it immediately because an application was going to be made. We were told we had all the information. Uh, we did have discussions with the developers and, and a good deal. But the fact of additional information and additional opportunity to reflect since November, I believe that council should not take a position in favor of this development. The Zoning Hearing Board will decide some of the issues that you raised, Greg. And I appreciate, and I agree with you wholeheartedly on the need, I think we all agree on the need to increase the tax revenue for the school district. I just do not feel that I'm in a position to support this project in front of the Zoning Hearing Board, and I wholly support our withdrawal uh, of our previous motion. Thank you. Um, Councillor Ashton Young, do you, do you want to say anything? 
Is there any other um, new business that needs to come forward to full council at this time? All right. Do I hear a motion for adjournment? Second. I'm just checking. To okay. All right. Uh, second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So borough council meeting is adjourned. We will now move forward uh, to our. Um, I call the Executive Finance Committee of June 20, 2018 to order. Um, is there any public comment for Evan Finance? Um, oh, um, I do have something. Um, public, uh, the Chief is out on um, his heavy surgery tomorrow. Um, and he's going to be fine. Um, it's not because of that. Um, but what he is, um, <laughs> I just wanted to say that as well, since all the funny people are here. Um, but he is very, um, he wanted to reiterate, um, I think he wanted to do this in a full, a full he was afraid to go through, but um, he wants to let you know that um, because that one officer left, um, that he does want to um, uh, run a test for civil service to get a, a list going again for patrolmen. I thought we already discussed it to prove that. Well, yeah. He wasn't sure. He wasn't sure. And it's in the budget, which is why I'm bringing well, that up. It's in the budget, but I, I thought we already we voted a public safety to move it to California. Maybe so, that's what he was thinking that. Right. So I don't have, know why he was so urgent. Yeah, I don't Whenever know. Whenever there's money, was, people always ask Evan and finance. But, yeah. But, but public safety already did. Okay. Sorry about that. I, I thought that, but he wasn't sure. Yeah, that's why I get all four of these. That's it. In terms of money. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, in your folders, you will find a tax collector report, um, a financial report. Rick, do you have anything to, any color to add on the financial report? Uh, I just mentioned that we had a liquid fuel audit, which um, had no findings. Yes, some flying colors again. So that was exciting. Uh, that's really it as far as we'll make these things. Things are tracking as per budget. Um, I think overtime is the one place where we're maintenance um, issues across the board, um, both, uh, and uh, and some overtime issues. Yeah, but there's nothing material. Um, JCA, anything from JCA? Karen's not. Karen's not here, and I know we're getting ready for big summer events. Yeah, yeah, not too soon. <laughs> um, and Rec Warren has been very busy, and I've seen. Um, Great things happening out in the square. Uh, it's, it's been really nice the last two weeks. Yeah. Really nice. And I think that the uh, Borough Blue House and uh, the new coffee slash ice cream place has really added to the festiveness mm -hmm. of the event. Um, it just allows for people to hang out longer. And it's going until 9 o'clock. Both bands have been excellent. So. Yeah. The rec and the rec, rec board does volunteers an excellent job. really put in a terrific number of hours in a lot of work. They really do. At the end of the summer, I think we should Steve to find a way to recognize Yeah, it. Steve yeah. Tolton, I know Pam um, Lynch, and yeah. Christian Soltesiak, and I know I'm forgetting people because there's more people uh, Chris, on there. Chrissy Lynch. Chrissy Lynch. Um, they're Lynch. all of mm -hmm. Lynch. Lynch. They're, Sorry. they're all a big part of that and making sure that Sorry. that goes off. Everybody else is named Lynch. <laughs> That that goes off well. So um, I think you're right. Um, saying something to me, and it it was funny. There was a group of mayors. Uh, Gene Sorg from um, Ambler contacted yeah. me and wanted to know if I would um, walk around um, other mayors of boroughs in the area and would be particularly doing on a Tuesday night um, oh, yeah. because of that. It's it's a nice thing. That's so. Right. Thank you for yeah, I was in the rec board for a while. And it's, they're they're spells of a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It really is. Um, well, thanks very much. So, for new business, I have two things that uh, I forgot to put up to the agenda, so I need to stick them on here. Um, one is we need to send, well, I ask that we send uh, to full council resolution 2018 17 um, for a DCED flood mitigation grant. Um, this was approved during the May council meeting, however, the entire project cost has gone up, and so we need to reapprove. Um, authorizing the submittal of this flood mitigation grant for a total of five hundred thousand dollars against a project um, which is expected to cost eight hundred thousand dollars. This is to take care of the Cedar Street flooding. It's a, actually there's a what is it a fifteen acre area? I'm not sure of the acre. 
uh, there, there's sort of a huge area that all seems to manage to pour right into the bottom of that hill on Cedar Street. Um, we're going to find additional grants to cover the rest. The borough's not putting out 300,000, but this is a good chance to get 500,000 of it. Um, and we need to ask borough council to approve that resolution. So I move that we do. Oh. I'm just wondering what is the change? What's the delta? Uh, it went up from 775 to $801,000 for total cost. <laughs> yeah. uh, just we have to do it to cross the yeah. So uh, uh, motion and second. Any more discussion? Who's granted it? DCED. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so we'll put that on the council agenda. Please. And then the other is a resolution um, that I embarrassingly will tell you I know very little about because I was just told at the last minute and I have to add it on. Um, and this is resolution 2018 19 LCS grant demo. It's the full information I have, so I'm going to lean on staff to tell me what the heck that is. This is a local share grant. Uh, we applied, we're applying for it for the demolition of the structures on Cedar Street properties. Oh, demolition of the stuff for the park. Okay. Yes. The Green Region grant we will know of on this property by the end of June mm -hmm. from Pico, which will cover all the planning and engineering of it. Okay. This is the second phase. This would be the demolition of the structures, okay. uh, abating any issues that we have with asbestos or sure. any other. Uh, putting the site on grade. And, uh, and stabilizing the site. In other words, planting grass on it, making it safe. Very minor stormwater work. Okay. What's the amount of the grant? Uh, $64,000. And do you know what the match is? It's a 25% match. Okay, but we've got that much of capital projects. We, we do. We have we budget for this. We budget for this grant. All right. So I apologize for not having had the information ahead of time. Just the last minute thing that has to get on uh, this month if we can. So I move that uh, we ask council to approve this resolution 22 19 uh, for this grant for the demolition of the park, the Moretti Park, or the Cedar Street. Cedar Street Park. Second. Uh, any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. And now we'll get back to the uh, agenda. Um, professional auditing services contract. Uh, our auditor, Barbara Kane Thornton, you'll remember, started a couple of years ago coming in saving us a ton of money versus the previous auditors, and we've actually been very pleased with their work. Um, I know that you guys have really only seen when they come in and present the results, but I hope you've been as pleased as I have um, about that. Um, they have increased the amount a little bit, $400 uh, a year uh, increase for in the borough and $300 for each of the firehouses. We have them audit the borough portion of the firehouse budgets. And I'd ask uh, that, that everybody approve our executing this next contract. I don't think this has to be a motion to council, it's just a positive Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah, they've done a good job. Okay. Is everybody in support? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I want to send a motion to full council to pay. Uh, make the final payment um, pursuant to the 2017 small water grant. So this is to pay National Water Main Cleaning Company $52,000 uh, that we got from the small water grant. This has been um, fixing the rehabilitation of uh, one of the two drainage basins within the borough that experiences exceedances on running meat. And so this is, uh, they redid the storm sewers on running meat where they flood. We should pay them now because they're finished with the work. Um, is there a second? Okay. Discussion? I just wanted to mention that this is for um, cured in place pipe lining and root control and grouting. Yes, that's correct. Really important parts of yeah, it, up our flood mitigation. It is, and it also it was a way to do it that didn't involve digging the whole things up right. and replacing them all at terrific expense, or lining them with brand new pipes in every case, places where grouting could fix it, et cetera, was done. Um, you may remember our previous engineering firm um, hastened their, uh, introduced themselves to the exit door by telling us we should just reline every storm story in the entire borough for a million dollars. This was not done that. So, um, 
Uh, did we say, did we vote on, we have a motion and a second, uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay, great, we'll put that. Um, uh, this is the same one that I said we left off the agenda, the local share grant uh, application, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so sorry, I got that twice. Local liquid fuels audit, so uh, we got audited. Um, we get a bunch of money from gas taxes, we spend it on streets, they come and audit and make sure that we only spent it on things we're allowed to spend it on, and we did, and we passed the audit. Um, again, I thank the professional staff who keep uh, very good records, and so these things are swift and painless, at least painless to everybody except Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and we're okay with that. Um, the next is to ask, uh, that we send to full council ordinance 2018-1, and this is uh, amending ordinance 2017-1, which provided regulations governing, governing medical marijuana dispensary and medical marijuana grower processor uses. Um, this will augment the ordinance passed earlier so it will mirror neighboring communities, giving us the same opportunity to collect taxes as neighboring communities. So this is really, I would say catching up. This is an evolving area since these things just became legal and the state law was just passed and the other uh, boroughs around were just passing their ordinances and we want to match so we're on equal footing to try to win some of these businesses. Uh, do I have a second? Can you? Oh, when do we ask questions? Right now. Okay. You will. I am having trouble getting to Dropbox tonight, so can you? So I can Can you the, give me the like the 50 yeah. cent tour of what the difference is? Do you want to? Do yeah, do you want me to? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, um, so essentially what Ordinance 2018-1 is going to do is, is create a definition for grower processors and then place it, put those grower processors in a location within the municipality. Just so like the, we did for dispensaries. Exactly. Okay. So when you did dispensaries, you did it for them. You just right. didn't create one for grower processors. Okay. So we're doing it for right. grower processors. So we're adding grower processors. And and just so it's clear, we're placing grower processors in the G Gateway Commercial District as a permitted use, subject to the same requirements that dispensaries have, as well as a few additional ones that were discussed previously in that mirror what other municipalities require of those grower processors, such as no noxious fumes, noises, anything emanating from the building itself. Yeah. yeah, signage, et cetera. Right. And also, well, the, the state law puts a huge number of restrictions on their signage and their security right. and everything else. So it seems like it's pretty comfortable. Okay. So I have salute for a second. Sure. All in favor? Uh, as long as it prevents drive throughs for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, right across the street from a taco bell would be yeah. perfect, but. Please, don't. Manager Lott. We, we voted, council voted to allow advertising this ordinance. It has been advertised. Okay. This, and this is moving to vote on the actual thing. Yes, and it will be a hearing. It has to be a hearing because it's a zoning ordinance. So it will be a stenographer. So it will be a stenographer for a public comment. Thank you for clarifying that. Yes, sir. At the next council meeting? Yeah, the next uh, okay. full council meeting. Oh, the next next week. Week. Yeah. Because it's a zoning ordinance, it's already been published, but we have to all have public comment about it and have the stenographer. Thanks very much. Um, ongoing business, the residential use and occupancy. Um, we've researched other municipalities that have the same lateral inspection program that we do, as well as financing options from both private institutions and PennVest, and the details um, are still coming. So we've asked a bunch of questions of a bunch of people, and we don't have the answers ready to present to you, but um, we haven't forgotten about it. Um, and uh, Mr. Garvin, you're perfectly welcome to take credit for the idea. Um, it is, in fact, a concern to us that we put a financial burden uh, on people that could be devastating to them sometimes with our laws. Yet we believe that the inspection of the laterals and the maintenance of sidewalks and curbs are absolutely necessary to the proper um, functioning of the borough. So we're trying to do something on both sides. Um, Act 511 per capita tax information. Um, we asked the administration to review the per capita tax um, collection and cost of collection um, to see how much it cost us to collect how little money. 
Um, and then I think we should also take into consideration how much of a just sort of annoyance it is versus how little money it is um, when we make our decision. Um, unfortunately, we've had uh, everybody kind of busy as we know. We don't have the, the numbers ready yet, but next month we're going to have them, right? He says, um, I'm sure I'm sure I'm I think the numbers are fairly solid. Um, it was really just an interpretation about whether or not we could reinstitute if we did turn it off the books and uh, and just I had some other issues about it, the informational aspect of it. All right, but can we be ready to have a full discussion on the next one? Sure, moment? absolutely. Yeah, and and in fairness to Rick, that is entirely my fault. Um, Rick had asked me to get back to him on the legal side. Hey, and everybody's been working a trillion hours on a trillion different things. We understand it, but next month I want to do it. Not a problem. Thank you. Yep. Um, Twenty sixteen. Thank you. I'm trying to find my place. Um, Twenty sixteen CDBG grant, which got bundled in with the 2017 CDBG grant for handicap ramps. The county's completed the review of the bid documents, permission to advertise, and bid has been granted by council. The project is going to take place as soon as the school year ends. This is the ton of handicap ramps, um, and it combined two years into one, and also our engineers. Um, discounted their work significantly off of what they could have charged us to enable us. That added like seven ramps or something to what we could do. Do you remember those? Half a dozen ramps. Six. Very six. Expensive. Yeah, but it, but it was a pretty significant contribution. So if you think to thank Cal for it, please do. Um, Cedar Street Moretti Park, um, the Green Region Grant will be awarded in June. And this would cover the engineering and planning of the park. Fully engineered plans would be used for future submittals um, to get grants to pay for them and for the actual construction. And then we just approved sending the grant for the demolition up to full council. And someone on Facebook came up with a funny name for the park. It was like Contention Park or something. <laughs> Argument Park. Argument Park, yeah. Makes me think of a Monty Python. I still like that name already since Mr. Moretti did sell it to us at a big discount. Where we will erect our festivus pole each year. Right. 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 Or the uh, Parky McPark face. <laughs> Isn't that why he um, offered to sell it below market value? Yeah. He wanted it named after his mother? He didn't ask. He didn't demand. Oh, no. He didn't demand. Um, and he also didn't put a restriction on us for using it in a particular way. He was very. Okay. But he, did, he did give it to us below market. And there's a. I think at some point. Um, have we formally thanked him? Yeah. Okay, we did. I mean, yeah. a couple times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was coming. Yeah. I remember he came in, but it, I mean, he was, um, his life was saved by an right. automatic defibrillator, which Mr. Glansman had paid yes. for to be at the yeah. um, high school, and uh, this was kind of a thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, um, finally, Cheltenham DEP penalties. Uh, it looks like we're still talking back and forth. They had penalties that were millions. They got them dropped down to hundreds of thousands. We owe 12% and we're still arguing with them about whether we owe it all or how much. Or, um, and we've got a meeting set. George? We did have a meeting down in Abington about another uh, grant opportunity and we touched on this. Okay. Uh, it was a rather heated discussion. I mean, Cheltenham and Abington. Well, they were here and we get to watch. Yeah, I just said I don't watch it. It's usually someone else. Yeah, but Abington's got a lot more going for But Abington showed that the the, um, the overages and the, and the fines occurred on days that they didn't have overages from their meters. Yeah, right. Yeah. So they're saying they have nothing. Right. Um, How about us? Do we have overages on our meters on those days? We have less. Um, ability to know what we had back then because it's eight years ago. Oh, it's before we just got all, meters. all new meters uh, in the last five years. All right, but we still have an opportunity, and we're in. We're in. The, nobody's paid in. We can sit talking. I bet we. And the pressure is lightening up a little bit with them having sold their system. They've oh, did they sell? They, they've agreed to sell. It, it takes a while. He said they won't see cash for eighteen months to two years. How will that um, affect their taxpayers? Will they just? Well, they, they sold it to Aqua, right? Aqua was the only bidder. The only bidder. And so Aqua, I assume, is going to pass that on to the... That's how it usually 
the and customers. And that's, that's, that's how it usually works. You know, but it's just amazing. Well, I mean, percent that will get passed on to us. Right. Oh, it is monitored. I mean, that, yeah, it has to be a rate case. It has to go forward. Right. Yeah, yeah, they can't. They don't want to launch, but they will take There's care of all the repairs. There's stuff that's going on. And those are going to do all the repairs and then pass that cost on. Okay. okay. So, um, other business. Just one quick thing. Um, this is just for site checks. I signed a seventeen hundred dollar check to the Doylestown newspaper for advertising all these things, and it like ticks me off. Is there a legal? I know that we have to advertise in a publication, a generally available publication, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is there a cheaper way to do it than in the Doylestown paper for seventeen hundred dollars? Uh, well, as long as it's a newspaper of a general circulation within the community, um, certainly. Um, our office could work with the administration to see if there's anything that's cheaper. The problem I will that's tell you that that's really is. If you're looking at the Inquirer, I just know this from when I was doing it. Um, if you go to the Inquirer, it's twice that much at least. It's I think state look. Y yes. Yeah. yeah. It, yes. So it will be. I believe it's time to let me get that changed. Nobody. Well, 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 if, if, if I if I could comment on that. Please do. Um, uh, it, it, not that you need to know my personal history, but my mother happens to work for the Reading Eagle as the legal advertisement person. And, uh, <laughs> we don't want to put her out of a job. Well, I'm, I'm, actually, I do. Actually, she would be fine with that, I think. Um, but, uh, but so, so I actually get calls from her sometimes wanting to know what the rates are down here in Montgomery County versus what the Reading Eagle in Berks County is charging. Yeah. And I will tell you, it does sound like in some of our newspapers it might actually be more competitive than up in Berks County. I would also suggest to you there is a very strong lobby in Harrisburg on behalf of newspapers because I will also suggest that this is a huge mm -hmm. revenue source for newspapers, mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. now yeah. that, you know, the when there are no other Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. When, I mean, my, my mother's entire job now is just devoted strictly to legal. legal advertising, ordinances, trusts, and, um, and the like. And I will I tell you, she gets often questions wanting to know with sheriff's sales. But how come sheriff's sales are down this month? Why is it not the same as it was the prior month? I don't know, because a lot of people aren't going to foreclosure. Right. Here's so the thing, it, is, it is a revenue source, and there is a big lobby in Harrisburg to, to not change it, because there was a movement previously to move it to online, yeah. as opposed to just print, and that did not go okay. anywhere. Interesting, thank you. And the idea behind advertising is an admirable one. Um, not, I don't know, print or. Um, I'm not opposed to the transparency. I think it's very the, no, but it comes to the point. Of what is the intent? The intent is to reach people. How do you reach people in 2018? It's not a classified ad. It's our legal obligation to do it, and if we do it that way, we're covered, and we're doing what we're supposed to do, and what we have to do. And if we don't, we're not. So we're going to do it. I just hate spending seven hundred bucks on. That's why we're all that. happy that you're doing that. <laughs> I am a cheap person. Um, all right, we already had a special council meeting. I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have any business for admin and finance? All right, I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right, now we're going to have DZNR. Are you leaving us, Jay? Yes. Uh, are, are you right. really leaving? Yeah. Okay, I'll email you. Okay, all right, sorry. <laughs>
Any questions about planning commission? Did I miss anything? No, I think you covered everything. It was a very run, well run meeting and agendas are doing minutes now. Uh, the people that were on previously that are, they're still on, they're getting used to the time zone or time change. It changed to six thirty. So we had three people for minute seven. But uh, it was really well run. A couple of people came from the public and talked. The last presentation of the 2035 comprehensive plan was last night. It was briefly presented because we just did it probably four times now. But we went over all questions that were posted, both online and that were offered or asked at, at meetings. We went over them. Marley pro provided a list of all the minor changes she had, which were grammar or uh, spelling. A couple pictures that um, that were in the in the draft that we had asked that she reconsider. Um, she just that she had a beautiful picture of York Road showing all of Lindy's planners and the Drake was having a festive night. It was the picture in the center was a dead tree oh. that um, we have scheduled to remove. And when I pointed it out there, she said, oh, I didn't notice that tree. Look how pretty it is all year. Yeah. Like it is gorgeous, but for some reason the dead tree. Because I guess because I know we're replacing it. Mm -hmm. So she has another angle that doesn't show that. Just tiny little That's good. Little, Thank very you minor changes and that will be before council next Wednesday night for final adoption approval. It's also a public hearing. The stenographer will be here for that also. Okay, formal adoption. Great. And I want to thank you again publicly for um, your careful eye in reading through the, the plan and catching all the things. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, uh, is there a report from the building department? There is a permit report in your packet. Um, it's blue in color, the header on it. And uh, it records every permit that we've issued. We've been very <coughs> busy this year in the building department. We had hired a part time fire marshal. Um, he's come on with properties, helping with property maintenance. He's also received both his residential and commercial plumbing certifications now. So we don't need a third party to do our plumbing inspections. Um, and I'm speaking of Kevin Lynch who's sitting here uh, as if he's not in the room. But um, that, you know, that was a great thing. And it saved us a bunch every hour that Kevin can do it instead of the third party. Save us, we pay $80 an hour for a third party. Right, so it's saving us 50 bucks an hour or right. more um, to um, get the fire marshal Lynch to it. And we have a plan for he's, he's working on certification for building now. Uh, we were planning to get into shape by the end of the year where he could do that. Right now, our, our inspector has, had resigned. He, he had some illness in the family. He had to just be, and he was a great guy. It was a shame he finally got somebody decent. It, his wife took ill and he, re, he resigned and retired. A um, real nice gentleman. We ran an ad. We had people come in. We interviewed them. We went through three different third parties trying to get somebody in a couple days a week. It's tough when it's only two days. Uh, so since March, whatever whatever is in plumbing, uh, I've been handling those inspections and reviews. And I just would like to point out that our, our permits are, are really up this year in residential. It's almost even or down in commercial so far, but we know we have a lot of commercial coming in. Uh, We've issued, uh, this year we've issued 235 building permits and and 15 zoning permits. So we've been very busy. Uh, Shelby helps out a lot in administration, but the numbers are here. If you'd like to look them over, if you have any questions, you can certainly ask me now or Possibly. Any questions? People more will be interested in hearing this. Um, uh, someone was working on the Lorenz household, re redoing their kitchen. I'm sure there's a permit in there for that. And um, the contractor was very, very um, complimentary about the process and what it was like prior to 2006 <laughs> and the difference and how much. Um, 
uh, better it is to how much, how better it is to come in and have be processed yeah. efficiently and in a timely fashion. And he credit that with the administration. So great. Thank you. Well, that's their own. It's nice to hear. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, um, new business. We already had our Taco Bell project discussion. Um, the next thing on the agenda says current development potential projects and hearings. Um, there is, with regard to the 610 Summit Avenue Roisman Senior Housing Project, um, the ZHB decision is under appeal at the Court of Common Pleas. Uh, so, I guess that's a 74 unit capacity issue. Mm -hmm. So they're very fundamental. Um, there's a project being proposed 141 to 169 Greenwood House Apartments. A revised zoning application is pending on that. Is that right? That is correct. They expected to come back within six to eight weeks. Um, it's been six weeks. The only change that I've had on that is the architects, engineers that we have met with um, haven't communicated with us recently, and Mr. Yanol has indicated that he's representing that owner. Yeah, that, that's also my understanding, Mr. Locke. I received a telephone call from Mr. Yanol's partner with regard to this property, and it's my understanding they'll be representing the property owner if they decide to move forward. <clears throat> That indicated to me that they may not be able to meet zoning like they thought they could. They were going to take those plans back and revise two or three things and try to comply with all zoning so they wouldn't have to go to CHP. But now that we've been contacted by a zoning lawyer, it kind of indicates mm -hmm. they might not have been able to do that. Okay. So as soon as we get the plans, we'll let you know. Thank you. Yeah, we'd like to take a look at those. Um, there's a zoning violation appeal for 301 Runnymede continued to 7 p.m. Wednesday, July 12th at Borough Hall. Um, that, when was that? I can't remember when. The it was supposed to be, the Taco Bell is the 28th. Is it the same as that? Whatever. So I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. The the hearing was on June seventh, Thursday, June seventh, and now has been continued, um, continued until July twelfth. July twelfth. Yes, All right. Um, on the twenty eighth, the ZHB hearing application will it has been de deemed complete, um, and they will uh, move forward to the ZHB on the twenty eighth. That is projected to be held at the high school auditorium. Um, and we will bring forward our, oh no, we just said, that was our official meeting. Sorry, I thought we were gonna bring it forward on the 27th, but. Um, so uh, it will be interesting to see if they reconsider or withdraw their application. I don't know, it's time will tell. Yeah. Okay, um, revised planning commission meeting schedule. Uh, I think we now know that they'll meet the third Tuesday of each month um, at 6.30. And those minutes, agenda, and meeting times will be posted on the borough website. Uh, and we have already discussed the Cedar Street Moretti Park um, grants and proposed actions there. So ongoing business. The, um, in 2017, uh, we applied for and received a 2040 implementation grant award to do a, a southern gateway project on York Road, and this is on either side of York Road on the Glansman property. So there's um, the old bank building where they have um, some cars parked on the, um, let's say that's the east side going north, um, and then um, a corresponding uh, project over on the west side, uh, sort of right between the dry cleaner and the Glansman's service center. Um, unfortunately, um, Ray Glansman passed away ago, and we had been working. The step that needs to happen is to ask um, Jim Glansman for an easement so that we can begin that work. And, um, so we just wanted to allow for a proper period of mourning before we move ahead with that. What, what do you think is the proper period of mourning, and when should we move ahead with that? I think it 
I, yeah, I think that a couple of weeks is what I plan to give them. And okay. It has been a couple of weeks now. Okay. Maybe try to line something up for July, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, July. You know, yeah. That'll go over a month. Right. Okay. Thank you for pursuing that. Of course, I'll be away in July, so if you want me to be around for it, maybe it would have to be August. Uh, Greenwood and West Avenue concrete compliance update. Do you want to just tell us about that, Manager Lock? Yes. Um, we had cited a lot of properties on both Greenwood and West. West between um, Cedar Street, where the business district ended, Cedar Street and Walnut. We, we had cited several properties, almost every one of them. And when I say cited, we sent them a notice telling them they needed to fix there. Nobody was written the citation. But uh, it took a long time. We didn't pay. That's a state road. We hadn't paved it, so it wasn't with the paving project, which is how we normally do the uh, repairs. It took us a long time, but we had all but one house comply now. He has two blocks. He had three. He did one. He's real short on money. Um, we've been talking to him. and. Uh, he filed for a permit and he plans to do it. We had uh, the one house that is does the commercial. It's, it's in C1, he's allowed to. It's all a parking lot in the front. He did replace his whole front sidewalk that was required. And I think he's done a lot of the cleanup. He had one other thing to do with the van. He's going to remove the van from the property that people had uh, didn't like getting me in there. Uh, do you know anything more on that one, Kevin? No. No? He's on the to-do list. Okay. He's been spoken to and he's agreed to, to move it. It just hasn't happened yet. Okay. Thank you for following up on that. Um, the handicap curb cut ramps installed on York Road. Um, a second letter has been drafted and sent to PennDOT requesting the ramp removals and restorations be expedited due to safety so these are those three ramps that are um, not at crosswalks, um, and you know we're very concerned. So we had asked Manager Locke to put big barrel, orange barrels on them, and I think the barrels are kind of deteriorating, and they also look oh, not so nice. So we really want those ramps to be um, the the repair of those ramps to be expedited. Great. Right. Um, I'm just charging through. If there are questions, please. Uh, the, we are still moving forward with our RFI um, proposals have been delivered to the RDA, to the Redevelopment Authority that is, and um, we are trying to arrange a meeting with Redevelopment Authority and um, members of the small work group so that we can think more about what additional steps need to be taken. Um, and Verizon Utility Pole Removal and Update. Uh, having attended the public uh, works meeting, I know that that is an ongoing project. Here. Any update? Oh, you had, that's right, you had Verizon and Pico in here the other day. Yes, I did. Uh, Verizon is, is filing an application to install cell facilities on 610 York, and uh, we did let them know. This the last time we had them in for a small antenna nodes on the two poles. We put pressure on them for their approval to help us with this, even though it's a different division. And it was helpful. Yeah. Got, got um, Councillor Connors and I met with Pico this week, who has pledged to assist us in trying to wrap this up. Uh, Jim has been tracking it. We haven't had action from them in two to three weeks now, though. Mm -hmm. So we did tell them at this at this cell meeting that this would be something that we would be talking to them about. It was a pre-application meeting. It wasn't an official okay. submittal. But um, they are gathering information for that. Okay. We also, um, I was directed to begin, I, uh, within the right of way, dangers that were created by Verizon. They take a pole out and there would be a two foot hole there. Right, and they walked away from it. Um, there were several concrete areas where blocks were raised, or, and we've been making temporary uh, repairs. And we've been documenting that because we plan on building them for that. Great. Um, the 
the only other thing is we were told to, to try to go to uh, to Representative McCarter and ask for his assistance. He has a liaison with, with Verizon. And Pico said that we would probably get pretty far using that person. Okay. And is it my understanding that you told Verizon that, I mean, this is a pre-application meeting, um, but that we really need to see some action on this other matter before we move ahead with their application? Yes, I discussed that with their attorney, who was the same attorney that we discussed it previously right. before we got something moving. Yeah. Okay. Right, but it's not enough just to take the holes out. They need to restore the, the sidewalk. Yes, I agree. Well, thank you for keeping that on the front burner. Um, I don't see any other items on, oh, one more item, sorry. Uh, okay, so um, we have received a request um, to honor a, um, the chief of nursing staff, chief nursing staff, who will be retired from Abington Jefferson Health at the end of June. And um, that person has, uh, the people that work with this person who's retiring, uh, whose name is Terry Riley. Does she live in Jamaica? Um, no, she does not reside in Jamaica. She lives in Jamaica. She lives in Jamaica. She lives in the whole world and she spends a lot of time in Town Square, her employer's building. Okay. So they want to sponsor a bench with a plaque. They want to sponsor a bench with a plaque. They want to do that. It like, seems okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, it did prompt me, though, to um, think about how um, I think that we should form a small group of people, may, it could just be two people, to formulate some guidelines about the sponsoring of benches or the dedication of benches or like putting things in town square. Um, so you want to wait off to make that decision? No, I think we could go ahead with this. Um, but it, I think it, it just raises the issue in my mind that I think we should develop some guidelines around it. Yes. So, um, is there anyone who might be willing to volunteer? And Je uh, George said that he knew yes. of a municipality that had some guidelines. I would volunteer. Okay. Yeah. Great. You know what I think something you need to do is figure out how many labeling opportunities there are in the first place. It is right. 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 Yeah. right. And actually, we could probably use new benches and things like that, so there could be giving opportunities yes. for the benches. And that could give any more hands. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also think we need to consider, and it's not something to decide tonight, about Mr. Greg Glansman, mm -hmm. who was such an integral part and kept the mm -hmm. business in town. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he gave, like um, Rick mentioned, he has donated um, hundreds of thousands of dollars to this borough on top of being mm -hmm. a consistent taxpayer on a lot of different levels. Um, but uh, he did give the defibrillator that saved Bobby Moretti's life <coughs> the basketball game my um, husband was at. Um, but but he, was, he did really care about this town and it, it, it reflected um, in so his- he was, Every image. time anybody asked him, he yeah. wrote a check. He wrote a check, like with the, with the run, with the, um, and these are just things I worked on. I know with the library, with the, um, the Arts Fest, he's been an integral giver that way. Well, so could I ask the two of you then to brainstorm what would be a proper way to honor him? Sure. David, how about... Um, Maybe that would be a plaque. Um, I'll email you. Okay. Next week. All right. Yeah. Thank I you. I mean, your one thought would be, are there sections of the future park that would be appropriate? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or even, um, yeah, there's a lot of different things we can think of in ways to, I, I think we shouldn't limit ourselves. But yeah, yeah I, I agree with you. We got, yeah, it should be more than a park. Yeah, in different ways. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we need a resolution with regard to this, do we? Yeah, we can just move it up to that woman ahead with it. Yeah. Um, and, and oh, also in that, I don't know if this is yet, but also in the line of group is going to be recognizing Jack Miller and Joshua Jackson. Yes, yes. it For turns her. out we have some more state. Yeah, really speedy runners. Speed racers. At the Kiwanis run, um, everybody who won, yeah, the, the girl and the oh. boy were from Jamaica. And if I could put out, they were at state uh, championships on color day, and they're both reds. And we would have won if they'd been here in town. That's a little bit of wishful thinking, but whatever. 
much. It's very you keep telling yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. But that might have been true. But anyhow, um, but at the Jamestown Kiwanis Project, Miller came in first, um, and a little girl, the Spurl, um, the youngest Spurl girl, came in first. She's as fast as anybody. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe she's so far. I mean, she's young, and she really did a great job. But anyhow, these two did great at States. So we'll be ready.